The Nazca Lines are undoubtedly one of Earth's most perplexing ancient relics. Not only are they unimaginably big, but their accuracy still baffles all who try to explain them, even to this day. With many of these ancient drawings seemingly only visible or indeed fully appreciated from great altitude, many people over the centuries have predictably pondered upon the possibility of there having once been ancient flying machines. And although many of these ancient marks could be perceived as possibly past runways or landing sites, there exists one site in particular that possesses some of the most compelling, if little shared, characteristics of them all. Known as El Fuerte, it can be found amongst a pre-Columbian archaeological site in Bolivia. It is believed that for over a thousand years, the site served as a ceremonial center for various pre-Columbian cultures, ultimately becoming the home of the Inca, who turned the site into the east capital of their empire. We have often stated that we strongly believe that at some point within Earth's distant history, a highly advanced intercontinental civilization once flourished, building enormous stone structures. With knowledge and capabilities in stone carving and building, we, the modern man, are yet to unravel. And although the site consists of an average ancient settlement, complete with buildings, architecture, and irrigational ruins, the most intriguing feature of the site, and the purpose for the video, is what was once carved out of the solid rock atop the mountain. Along the crest of the hill is the most intriguing feature of the site, or possibly Nazca itself, known as the El Cascabel, which can be translated as the rattle. It is two parallel lines oriented to the eastern sky, with a position of azimuth at 71 degrees and an altitude of about 6.75 degrees. Interestingly, this is the exact orientation of the rise of Pleiades at different times within history. Why was this curious carving etched into the top of this mountainside within Bolivia? Was this ancient site once used as a launching pad? Furthermore, intriguingly, much of the surrounding stone seems to have experienced ancient quarrying. Is this ancient mountain the site of an ancient quarry, once done by a group who had flying Vimanas at their disposal? An incredible sight, which we find highly compelling. Dr. Alexander Koltepin, a geologist and director of the Natural Science Research Center at Moscow's International Independent University of Ecology and Geology, has been successfully investigating some very controversial finds throughout the world. Dotting the earth are areas of ancient petrified ground that has remained untouched for millions of years. Once soft mud, these areas transformed into stone over many millions of years. What is amazing about these areas is the evidence of tire tracks embedded upon the stone. Many have speculated that they are in fact tank tracks, or tracks of far larger vehicles than cars. What Dr. Alexander Koltepin has discovered is that these tracks made by an unknown vehicle cross geological faults confirmed as being created in the Middle and Late Miocene period some 12 to 14 million years ago, proving they are older than these natural faults. Just what sort of all-terrain vehicles could have been traversing the landscapes of Earth some 15 million years ago? The petrified tracks have been found in numerous areas within Turkey and Spain, and even further afield. Petrified wheel ruts have been found in Malta, Italy, Kazakhstan, France, and even in North America. One of the major clusters is in Sofka, Turkey, with tracks covering an area of about 45 miles by 10 miles. Another is in Cappadocia, Turkey where there are several pockets, one of the biggest being about 25 miles by 15 miles. Some of the tracks are similar in length to modern cars, with tires about 9 inches wide. Dr. Alexander Koltepin said geological and archaeological works that contain information about these ruts are few and far between, especially in English. Koltepin maintains, after heavy research, that the tracks could not possibly have been left by lightweight carts or chariots as the vehicles that left these tracks would have been much heavier than carts pulled by camels. They left far too deep of an impression on the earth. 
He has conducted many field studies in various locations and reviewed published studies on the local geology extensively. He hypothesizes that a network of roads once spread through much of the Mediterranean and beyond some 12 million years ago. These thoroughways would have been used by people who built the underground cities, like that at Cappadocia, Turkey, which he theorizes are also much older than mainstream archaeology holds them as today.